Here with Keegan Watt. Keegan, lots of roles in hockey between under 18 coach of the South Shore Mustangs. You've been involved with scouting at numerous capacities with the Yarmouth Mariners. Check out the background on this guy. And also with uh, Boisbriand Armada in the Quebec Major Junior League. Thank you very much. Quebec Maritimes Junior League. I got to make sure I'm politically correct. Yeah. Today. <laughs> no, uh, pleasure being on, Piercy. Uh, uh, we listen, listen often, so it's good to finally catch up. Okay, we've got ACC. This is coming up. we got Thanksgiving weekend, hump day. We're coming up on Thanksgiving weekend, which is Atlantic Challenge Cup. You have coached at the ACC level before. What is it like coaching Nova Scotia, the perennial favorite to win? As a Newfoundlander going into the tournament, Nova Scotia is always a favorite. And you know when you're picking your teams, you're thinking, can this player play at this level to beat Nova Scotia? Can they keep up with Nova Scotia? That's kind of a barometer and a litmus test. What's it like coaching that level? And there's a lot of pressure to win uh, the ECC. Uh, no, you know what? In Nova Scotia, we don't we don't tr- put too much pressure on our guys. Uh, our our plan is to have the best experience for the kids. Um, and if a win comes out of the tournament, a win comes out. Uh, our objective to it all, to the whole high performance program, is to put as many kids uh, on the national level as possible. Uh, so that's a that's a big thing for us. Um, we try to strive to have as many bodies go into them camps every year, and so we like to start them out uh, with that experience and what that's going to be like at the U14 level, into the U15s and into the Q Challenge Cup. Are you involved at all this year? Um, yeah, so I'm coaching the U15 male team. Uh, you know, coming off a, a third place performance last year, so. Obviously looking to get back in the gold medal uh, game, but again, we got a very good group uh, coming out of Newfoundland to compete against and a very good New Brunswick group as well. So it's uh, it's going to make for a great tournament. The way the tournament is structured too, you can have a great round robin, but the round robin gets thrown out the window once you enter that semifinal. You can be the first place team. I just go back a couple of years ago, the Newfoundland female under 18 team. They got crushed in the first couple of games, and then they played Nova Scotia, who beat them maybe by ten plus in the round robin. They play them in the in the semifinals, and Newfoundland squeaks out a win. One game, winner take all. Anything can happen. So, yeah, obviously the the goal for for you making the finals and making the final game, but just as a type of tournament that anything can happen when you're not dealing with the best of seven or a best of five playoff series. Yeah, so we use we like to use the round robin tinker. Uh, you know, we we tell the boys, you know, we're going to come in, we're going to start uh, with certain things, and then we're going to keep rolling throughout the whole, th- whole tournament. Uh, we don't, we want to stay composed the whole time. We're going to have ups and downs. We're going to be up three, one, we're going to be down three, one, you know, we're going to have a five on three to kill off. We're going to get a five on three. So it's all about staying composed. And the last couple of years, you know, we uh, we've had a rocky round robin, right? We uh, we tie PEI in one in one game. Um, you know, had a great game against Newfoundland last year in the last round robin game. Uh, so you know, didn't finish in first both years that we actually came out on top at the end of it. And uh, I think that little bit of you know, a little bit of pressure too. Uh, some of the boys feel that, right? Uh, so. I think that adds a little bit of character to the boys too. And then, uh, you know, when they come through in the end of it, it uh, makes for a good, good weekend. It's definitely the round robin is something you are trying to use to as coaching at that level previously, it's something, okay, if I can find what works and going into the tournament, I'm the type of person I like to put players that are familiar together. So if that line played together in U13, AAA the previous year, try to keep them together because it is a short tournament it's sometimes hard to build that chemistry. You're only playing four or five games. So if they already have that chemistry going in, it's nice to be able to put players, familiar faces together. But, you know, round robin generally using it for that, okay, I have, this line works, but I got to maybe tinker with these lines. Like you mentioned, you're trying to make some small adjustments so you can hit your stride in the playoff round for sure. Yeah, for sure. Like hidden into last year, I remember our starting lineup that we had for game one, uh, the three guys down the middle ended up playing together uh, in the first semifinal game and then it just hit it off. Right. And they, they led the way and then um, ended up having a great gold medal game for us. Um, and, you know, it was, so it, it always, you know, you always tinkering the whole round Robin, 
and then, you know, hopefully have your best step forward come semifinal day. As Dave Matthews Band once said, funny the way it is. That's right. That's right. Um, predictions. Okay, let's go. Not U15, obviously, or coaching at that level, but um, U14. Um, how's the Nova Scotia crop looking? And maybe we'll talk a male U16, uh, the Q Cup this year at, in Dieppe at the Uniplex, one of my favorite rinks. Absolutely love that facility. Oh, that facility is is top notch. You know, I would love to have a U18 team play out of that one, right? It's a, it's a great facility. Unreal. Um, predictions, U14s, um, you know, it, it's gearing up for the Canada Games group, right? That's the next uh, next group coming through. So Nova Scotia, you know, they, they got a couple uh, high-end forwards, uh, you know, and uh, one kid, uh, Jackson Mood, right from kind of my area, uh, 10 minutes down the road. Uh, he's playing in the Bedford Bandits program this year, along with uh, Maddox Burke, another high-end skilled forward. Uh, so, you know, they're probably going to look to look to lead the way there. Um, again, um, hearing uh, New Brunswick has a really good crop uh, coming out, and I'm hearing the Newfoundland, Newfoundland group's uh, another good group, really good group coming out. Uh, you know, looking back at Last year's U13 Atlantics and, and Spud tournament, um, you know, good success coming off the island, off the rock there. So it's uh, it's great to see, great, great to see for sure. U14, I think that across all three age groups on the male side this year, I think that if Newfoundland doesn't medal in all three ages, that would be a missed opportunity. I think that this is a stronger stretch of three years that we've had in quite some time. And starting with the U14 group, I really like that 2011 age group in Newfoundland. They're very deep down the middle. I think there's a lot of players there that, you know, your third, fourth line center can be your first or second line center, depending on the day, which is rare when you have a smaller province. Oftentimes your forwards, when you got 12 of them, it's hard to find that 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th player that can play at that level and play and compete against the Nova Scotians, New Brunswick PEIs. But that year, I think, is stronger up front, I think it's a very deep age. It was a tough selection process from what I can gather. There were some players that I expected to be there, but they aren't. But I like the makeup of their team. I think they have some good coaches there as well. So I think the U14 team should do well. We will see. You don't. I haven't seen the other provinces, but knowing the talent yeah. level, they've got some studs there. They've got some really strong players. Not going to name any names, but I'm looking forward to seeing how they play in Moncton at the Superior Propane Center. And U16, how is the Nova Scotia crop looking? I think you've seen a bit of a turnover, which was kind of expected from our U15 group. Um, you know, every year you have a bit of turnover. Um, I think uh, some the right guys are there for sure, and they, they're led by a, a good coach um, that I think they're going to have a lot of success this weekend coming up. Who's coaching there this year in the U16? Uh, Kyle McClellan that coaches with uh, oh, yeah, Weeks. weeks. Yeah, yeah, he's uh, very detailed. Uh, he's going to be having that group going, uh, pushing in the right direction. Yeah, I follow him on Twitter on on X or whatever. He loves to post video and breaking it down and stuff like that. He seems like a very knowledgeable coach. Yeah, he is for sure. Uh, you know, I, I I do have him on social media platforms as well. So it's uh, it's always good to you know see what he's up to and, and his view of different areas of the game. Is he a guy you could see moving up in the next five years or so moving up? Maybe you see him in the queue or in the Maritime League or maybe even higher? Yeah, I would like to think so. Um, Kyle has a real brain for the game. Um, I would like to think, you know, the Maritime League or, you you know, uh, the queue would come knocking decently soon. U16 in Newfoundland, I think it's a strong age. You look at on the back on the back side of it, outside of Quinn Norman this year going into camp. I felt like there was a lot of spots on D upper grabs. And when you look at the team from last year on D and the team in this year on D, it's a much different look. There's a lot of new faces. So it'll be the, some of their first experience playing at that, you know, ACC level. So it'll be mm -hmm. interesting to see how those players do. But up front, you still have those powerhouses, the really offensively skilled, offensively gifted group. But there's a few guys that I'm really looking forward to up front. They're not name brand guys that everybody's going to be talking about, maybe major junior level, but they're guys mm -hmm. that have gotten a lot better over the summer that they're, you know, they grew their skating is after really coming along. And they're players that when I'm watching, like I got a little asterisk saying, I can't wait to watch that player to see if they can get that level. Can they get to that level? 
So that's a team I'm really excited. If they play good team defense under PJ Power, I think they have a chance. I, I do. Um, PJ had them with the U15 AAA program. Uh, Justin Parsons there as well. I just can't remember who the other coach is offhand, but that coaching staff has has won before. They won the U14 male tournament a couple of years back, and they're mm-hmm. solid in goal too. Uh, both goaltenders that made the team this year are, are good goaltenders. And it, I, I just think that they'll have a chance. PJ will have them going just like Kyle will have Nova Scotia going. So I think it's going to be a real, real good hockey in Dieppe this this um, this coming weekend for sure. Yeah, no, 100%. I'm hoping to uh, get out there to catch a couple games for sure. You're going, well, you're already there. So it's just down the way. I yeah, wish you had had something like Dieppe Uniplex, just a beautiful two pad rink with one is more of a pro rink and the other one is more of a practice rink. But that's really yep. all you need. Uh, in a town like Dieppe for sure they have the other rink too which is a nice rink uh I'm gonna say it's the Arthur LeBlanc it, it's nice yes. yeah it's an older one but the old Dieppe commandos the MHL used to play and remember that <laughs> oh yes yeah that's for sure the old MHL historian so you have scouted for the Boisbria Armada yeah what is scouting for the Q like versus being a head scout at Yarmouth are you looking for the same things in a player are you looking for like what characteristics are you looking for in a player, but also the drafts are a little bit different where, you know, the Q year might be looking for this and in the maritime league, you might be looking for that. Just explain how, uh, explain what you're looking for there. Yeah, no, in the Q, you know, you're looking for the guy, the the high end guys, right. Uh, You know, for me, the the first thing is, is, you know, character, What, what kind of player are they? Um, how are they off the ice? Um, what's their body language like? Um, you know, all of the kids at this U18 level, you know, they can play hockey, right? They can skate, they can move a puck, but what's their tangibles away from the game too, right? What's their schooling like? What's their workouts in the summer like? Are they a kid that's, you know, are they up on their sleep and eating habits and all that extras, right? It's, that's what it takes uh, in the queue. You know, junior A, is it's a tough draft, Right. Uh, you know, you're, you're trying to navigate the guys that are going to go play major junior. Uh, you got guys that may start looking prep. Um, you got some guys that are looking out West or Ontario. Uh, so, you, you know, you got to mix, you got to mix there. Right. So you're trying to, to navigate the waters there, which can get a little, little messy at times and you lose some guys and, you know, you take some, some runs at guys that, you know, you think are going to play major junior, but maybe they're not going to be there at 19 and 20. So then you might, you know, luck out and get them back in junior a. So, you know, Yarmouth, we're, we're really happy with where we're at in our uh, previous drafts, our last three or four. Uh, We got some really good kids in there. That's the first thing we want. Good people. Uh, Yarmouth's a big community team, right? We are in the community all the time. So we really want good people. Uh, and we really have some good talent coming up. Uh, you know, we got uh, this past draft uh, just with Owen O'Donnell, Cole McLeod. Uh, you know, we, we traded for Luke Dooley that's with the Max this year. So we're really, we're really happy with how things are looking so far. Do you think that this new CHL NCAA deal that's, I don't know if it's been announced, but I'm hearing a lot of rumor that it's being done uh, behind the scenes. It's pretty well completed is this going to affect the Maritime League draft? And is it going to affect the Maritime League as a whole, do you think? Um, yes and no. Like, I, I personally, I think it's going to be a good thing for, for hockey in general. Um, I think them kids now, uh, you don't have to decide right away, right? They're going to have that option. So, so that's good. Um, where I think it might affect a little bit, honestly, is – teams in the cis you know those guys that was was the option after guys are done major junior right so now after you're done major junior for or, you know whatever that ends up being you're going to be able to now go play in ncaa where before you would go to ontario tech or st mary's or umb or you know what i mean so i think those teams are the ones that end up taking a little bit of a hit uh, and not so much the junior a guys I look at this as one, I want to wait and see to see how, you know, wait in five or six years to see what exactly transpires and how the lay of the land works. But we're seeing in the, in the NCAA football world and in other sport, in these other sports in college where, you know, the transfer portal, this is almost like there's a transfer portal now, because at the end of the season, if you're not happy where you are, maybe you played on the fourth line 
of a major junior team as a 16 year old. Oh, you know what? Not going back there. I didn't like how they treated me. I didn't play much. I'm just going to go to BCHL next year and then go to play D1. So it'll be interesting to see how players like from a development standpoint, how teams sell, like, listen, we've got a plan for you and then execute that plan. Or are you going to be able to, if you're a major junior team, take a 16 year old, say, Hey, listen, we're going to play eight minutes a night. Are they going to want to stay now that they can, you know, I, I, this is not for me. I don't want to play eight minutes a night and maybe move up to be 10 minutes a night the next week or the next season. I'm just going to go to the BCHL or go to the null and then go and play D1. So I think it's going to be very, very interesting for teams, just like it is right now for college programs and football to keep players and keep young players in the system. I think it's really going to rely on reputation and development. And I think it's going to put more pressure on teams now to develop their draft picks than ever before. Oh, hundred percent. Right. And uh, it, it's going to make it so your program has to do the talking, right? It, it's that's, that's what it's going to come down to. And uh, you know, I was actually, it's, it's funny. I was talking with uh with a gentleman the other day and, and we were talking about, you know, the pressure of the drafts at the, the WHL, OHL, you know, Quebec major uh, level. And uh, he brought an interesting spin on things and I'd never really thought of it. And, and the last couple of days has me kind of pondering over it. He said, what if you take away the drafts and everyone's a free agent in Canada, North America at the end of every season? And so that way, and I said, you know, yeah, you know, that's, that's not a, not a bad thing. And he, he honestly believes in the next uh, eight years that that's where hockey's going to go. Is he right? I guess we'll see. It's an interesting take though. The more you think about it and sit down and, and, and actually consider how, you know, it might prevent some tampering or, you know, kids getting lost in the shuffle, right? We, we talk about the portal it might, you know, stop that kid from having eight minutes out west in Moose Jaw when he could come to Charlottetown and play, you know, 16 minutes a night, right? So I think there's some interesting takes in it. Um, what's your thoughts? I think it's really, that's an interesting way to look at it because now you're saying I can be recruited by anybody. So if I'm playing yeah. anywhere, if I go to Notre Dame prep school and I'm in grade 10, well, if they want to recruit me, in grade 10 and I'm going to go to tri city, but I'm from Newfoundland. If they're really, if they really like me, then, Hey, it opens up that door. And I think it might give players more opportunities than just kind of say pigeonholing people into, I got to play in this league because I'm from this region. Right. If, well, I don't want to be, I don't want to be on a Quebec, on a Quebec based team. I'm going to select going to the Ontario, uh, Ontario hockey league because I've got family in Guelph. And I want me, I can live with them and I can play there and they, they really like me. So I can yeah. kind of go where I'm wanted more than just, okay, I've only got 18 teams that I can pick from or that are interested. Now I've got 60 some. Exactly. A, I think it's an interesting take but, and we will see, we will see C la V. I think it's going to be very interesting, but you know, yeah. you know, who's going to win out with all this is the players. hundred percent. That's And that's what we have to be there for at the end of the day. Right. It, it's, it's a player. You have to, it's, you know, owners or gms and coaches you know at the end of the day their job is to be there for the players all i don't want to see is kids that oh there's a little bit of adversity eh, i'm gone the next year coach coach didn't play me coach sat me i'm gonna go somewhere else that's what i don't want to see i i want to see i still want to see kids fight to show hey listen i might be playing fourth line right now but next year i'm coming i'm gonna be on their second line and i'm gonna be the hardest working player in practice in the weight room to be that versus Oh, you know what? I'm a fourth liner. Just going to get my agent to get me a better deal somewhere else. You know, it's that's a that's, that's a whole nother avenue and a whole nother conversation. It's and this might be a hot hot take, but it, it happens way too much now. Oh. Um, <laughs> kids are looking for guarantees, man, in the, the year before, right? Like they want a guarantee for the next year and. Instead of putting your work boots on in the summer, come to camp and earn your spot. Um, it seems like those days are are few and far between now with a lot of kids, right? They want that guarantee. And and I, I get it. It gives you that little bit of security knowing 
But at the same time, what does that teach you off uh, in, in life too, right? Hockey's only around for, you know, you only play the game of hockey if you're lucky till 25, right? And that's if you're very fortunate. You know, you, you still got your whole life ahead of you, you know, in the corporate world or wherever you end up, you know, dentist, doctor, wherever. Um, you know, what I'd like to tell my players is when things get tough in those industries, are you just going to, you know, pack it in and, and go do something else or are you going to fight through that adversity and and become a better person and grow from it and that's and that's what i like to try to teach our guys see guys like keegan are part of the reason why i absolutely love scouting and working with yarmouth because there's so many like-minded individuals our coach our scouting staff with yarmouth when you know i'm, I'm not there this year but the scouting staff the last couple of years with guys like jordan justin clayton unbelievable group of guys and fun to just talk hockey it wasn't always just okay player a player b player c call it a night it was we talked about things like this and and i think it's awesome that we can have these types of conversations and, and we'll dive right into this i mean i don't want to keep you too much here tonight we'll, no no we'll stay on the q side halifax yeah. Moose, they got a new coach andrew lord has really seemed to bring a different aura about this team previous years you know say what you want about them you know major league's gone now they started off they're starting out hot what do you think of the halifax mooseheads right now and also what do you think of the moncton wildcats out of the gate they didn't have any power play goals in the first couple of games is this something that's going to continue for them uh halifax you know i think they've bought into what the coach is preaching right he's preaching hard work uh you know team community and I think he's just got a group of guys there that, you know, led by some great leaders um, that's saying, you know, we're, we're all together in this thing, right? We're not, they're, they're, they're not taking that rebuild title, right? They're like, what is that? You know, they're, they're going after it. And, and uh, you know, it's, it's great to see, uh, especially led by, you know, some, some young guys like Danny Walters and, and Caden Blake from, from, you know, Newfoundland and, you know, it's good to see them guys getting good ice time and at that level at that age. And I think that's huge and important. Um, and, you know, with, with Moncton led by Gardner, I don't think there's too much to worry about there, right there. They're, they're going to be just fine. Right. Uh, it's he's, he's known for, for winning and, and having good culture and, and good programs and good teams. Um, he'll, they'll just be just fine there. Yeah, well, when we were watching the draft, you know, I was watching the Q draft. When they saw Daniel Walter's name get called, I was expecting that to be Tyne and Lawrence. But but Shakutami took Lawrence that pick ahead. And then I'm thinking, okay, like, who are they going to go with here? There's lots of real good players on the board. They go with Walters, a guy that I liked, but I didn't see him going as high as he did go. But it seems to be really working out for Halifax because they seem to have a player identity that they were looking for. And it's like they had use best case uses for players that they put on, you know, into positions right now where they can succeed. And they, they almost have an identity now in previous years. It was more like just run and gun and skill and do and these mm -hmm. guys. But this year, it seems like a lot of play. They're just hard to play against hard hats, work ethic, compete level. And it's, it's, I, it's, it's going to show, I think they're going to be a tough out this year. Do I think that they got enough to, to, you know, to beat the Quebec teams to, to win? Maybe not, but are they going to be a team that you want to play in the first round or second round of the playoffs? Probably not. No. You know, um, going back to the draft and, and everything, uh, you know, talking to multiple scouts and, and people was like, oh, you know, you know, what do you think of Walters? And if you got to see Walters, and, and I got to have him at the ACC, um, and the way that kid commands a dressing room, that way like he's honestly he's like a he's like a 20 year old now like the way he goes about his business man it's 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 something else um uh, i personally i had him in the top 10 um some people didn't uh didn't think that uh but when when that came out i was not one bit surprised where he went um, and he's going to have a a great career there that's good. Good player. Had a good ACC at a couple goals in the finals, too. I, I got a feeling he's a gamer. Yeah. So He is. He's a real gamer, that guy is. So you're coaching at the Nova Scotia level. So what are some things, talking about Daniel Walters, that some things that you liked about him, what are you looking for in a player at the U18 level right now with your Mustangs team? Again, you know, try, not, you know trying to 
make my own culture, but trying to piggyback off some some teams that I've been involved with and, and some former coaches that I've coached with, trying to create a good culture. So we want good people first. Uh, body language is a huge thing for me. Um, you know, kids uh, after a whistle or after a play or, you know, being sat down for a little while, how, how's their body language? Um, so that's a huge thing for me. And honestly, being able to think the game, right? Like um, that's, that's a big thing right now. I think, I think what needs to happen too. some is we have a bunch of, there's been a huge push on skill development the last 10, 15 years, we'll say. So you're noticing all kinds of kids be able to stick handle in a phone booth, right? And then that's great. That's perfect. But how much of the summer sessions and the extra sessions are they doing that's relating to game applicable stuff? Right. So and that that ties into, you know, what we try to do on the shore in, in the summer times is you might you're not going to see 55 pylons or cones or stuff out on the ice. Right. What we're trying to teach is game applicable stuff. Right. So so you look at that, you know, can the, can the kid read react off off his partner, you know, off his teammates? Can he, you know, complete in a system that, you know, hockey IQ is, is a big thing for me, too funny that you say that because that is a big trend right now in in skill development is like how can i make this look so cool on instagram that a kid's gonna say hey dad i really want to go to this program because oh it looks so cool for tiktok or it looks so cool on instagram but the game is is not played where you're just by yourself and you're just yeah. stick handling a million times, really just kind of wasting energy because you're in open space. You don't need to stick handle in open space. You just need to have it loaded, control it. I, I mean, it's amazing how many kids you work with that have bad habits. And part of it is because they do this in other programs, but also part of it is it's not something that's corrected by minor hockey system. It's it's okay. You didn't make a mistake, but yeah. You, you just missed a play that you could have hit a guy down the wing because you were looking down stick handling puck. Yeah, exactly. You no, know, and, and some of these hockey tools that I'll call like hockey, like you can buy these, you know, super deakers, a super deaker has a lights on the machine that are blinking and you have to stick handle through it. What's it teaching a kid? It's teaching a kid to look down. And, and as much as I understand that's exciting and it's, you know, okay, I got to stick handle through here. I can get a high score. It's kind of has a video game feel to it. Yeah. It's not the way the game is played. The game is not played picking pennies off the ice. The game is played no. with other people out there, guys or girls, and you've got to be able to make plays and execute. And when I'm doing video analysis, it's amazing how few kids can make a D to D pass on a guy's tape or a girl's tape. It's in a feet. It's on their backhand. Yep. And by the time they get it over, by the time they get puck over, it's the play. There's nothing there now. It the play, and then we got to turn it over. Yeah, exactly. I, it's like, wow, uh, you know, but that person can stick handle. Oh my goodness. They can stick handle and do a glide turn, but they can't yep. make pass. How how many kids right now can't make a receive or give a pass off their backhand oh. <laughs> in, in, in stride? You know what I mean? Like it's, uh, it's, it's real scary. It, it really is to think that, you know, that's what's going to the, to the next level or that's what's coming in. Um, you know, we're, uh, we're, we're doing a good job on the shore. Um, you know, we got, uh, we're, we're decently big region, um, from Yarmouth right through to Hubbard's and, and a lot of minor hockey's now, uh, there's, you know, five or six different minor hockey associations from decent size one in Yarmouth to, you know, a smaller one right here in Shelburne County where I'm from. Um, uh, but they're, uh, they're starting to put in some people that's a hit of development for coaches and players. And you know what? Uh, they're starting to really come along in that area. So it's it's good to see. Hopefully, we see the the results here in the next probably four or five years at the U eighteen level. Um, but uh, it's it's nice to see. Well, let's parlay this into uh, Redline Hockey. You have your own hockey yeah. development company. This is this a, just a summer thing? Talk a little bit more about what you do and and what a year would look like with Redline. Yeah. So typically, it's just summer. Um, it was originally designed in COVID times where, uh, that's actually where the name came from red line. Cause you were only allowed two groups, red line, the goal line, red line, the goal line. So I, I said, that's a pretty, you know, it was a good time. Um, so yeah, typically summer, uh, right now we've only been doing U18 groups, uh, um, just, 
it's again, it's tough. I got guys from Yarmouth the whole way through to Chester. Uh, we skate out of Liverpool, which is Queen's Amira Center. Beautiful facility. Um, but again, I got guys traveling two plus hours for an hour, hour and 15 of ice time. Twice a week, the guys are doing that. Um, so, you know, ideally, I would love to run it out of Yarmouth. Um, that's about 40 minutes for me drive. Um, but then I lose. It's, it's not the best group you can have, right? Because you need the whole South Shore to create the best group. Um, so again, it's it's tough for kids to train along the South Shore. It really is. Um, and then uh, Christmas time, when some bodies are back home, uh, we'll grab a few ice times right here in Barrington because the ice is there. Uh, yeah, they take the ice out for the summer, so we can't skate here in Barrington in the summer. Um, but there's tons of growth for Redline Hockey. Um, you know, we're, we've been talking a little bit about creating a, a junior Mustangs program on the South Shore that has some spring hockey involved. And the focus would obviously be the development side and then go to a couple tournaments, you know, nothing, nothing crazy for the parents, but what we would love to do is, is turn it into the development side. Um, there's some great guys involved. You know, I got Sean Woodworth. Uh, his son is Luke Woodworth, captain with Drummondville. Um, so they, when he's home in the summer, utilize them too as much as I can. They're, they're a wealth of knowledge. Uh, we now got Brad Muse coaching at the U15 level. Uh, great, great coach there. Uh, coached Major Midget when it was back then. Coach Junior A, uh, scout for uh, Central Scouting at one point he was. So a great brain there. And uh, then obviously we got good old LB down in Yarmouth, right? So he's a, he's a wealth of knowledge. So, you know, we, we try, try to tie in as many people. Tyler Smith uh, is what we would love to do. Um, but again, it's, it's a, uh, it's a project, but we're, it's something that's a, a big need and a big want of, of mine along the South shore. Well, geography hurts here too. You look at the central region for AAA. So U15 AAA female. Go over town to Springdale is like a four and a half hour drive. I mean, that's a long way and they're on the same team. Yeah. Hard to practice. You know, you almost have to do it in weekends. It's just very, very challenging. And you just explain the challenges to do it and have a program like something you'd see in the HRM or Cole Harbor and Dartmouth where the mm-hmm. players live within probably 20 minute span of each other. You can get everybody together in an impromptu gym session. You can't yep. do that. I mean, nope. it's going to be pretty difficult because you got people, you're pulling people from all over the place that it's a wide geographic area. So it, it is definitely tough, but definitely good to see that you are focusing on developing players. And Keegan, honestly, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on. Uh, really, really knowledgeable person. I will post in the description of this video. I'll post Redline Hockey's information. I'll post a little bit yep. more on Keegan. And I'll also maybe even throw in an email or somewhere that I can put in there. So if somebody wants to contact you about junior, oh, 100%. Hockey, about your program that they can reach out to you and Keegan, again, person, very easy to deal with. He'll give you an honest answer, no nonsense. So these are what we call our VHG education series. We want people to learn and, and to be able to pick up some things. Hopefully they picked up some things from Keegan. Thank you very much for coming on today, buddy. Thank you very much, Piercy. Love to uh, get back and chat sometime with you soon. Absolutely. And good luck to the Mustangs, Monctonian coming up in a month's time. And good luck to Nova Scotia, but not really at the ACC. <laughs> no, I, I want to see you do well. And my Rebecca Babiak in PEI used to work with us. Ryan Bessie, another person. I want to say good luck, but you know, you guys are coaching other provinces. So, mm, you know, yeah. uh, well, to my Newfoundland, to the rock, baby. All right. I'll catch you later, buddy. Have a good night. All right. See you, Piercy.